We've been talking about screen time in the classroom this week on Information Morning. Candace Ellis, the parent of a child at Five Bridges Junior High, told us she thinks students spend time on Snapchat and similar apps and are distracted from their lessons. But Ramona Joseph, the school's principal, told us that in the past when students passed notes in class, teachers didn't throw out the pens and papers. That brought us several responses, including this one from Sandy Reeser. The principal said today that they one of the most important things they teach the kids is respect for all and uh, that their bullying has gone down, et cetera, et cetera. Well, with respect for all, I wonder if that includes the teachers who might want full attention while they're trying to teach. And you've got 28 children, possibly all on 28 different machines, listening or doing 28 different things, which leads to the next comment, and that is the basic life skills of listening focusing, able to talk to people, able to communicate to a person rather than a machine, and how many of us have either had employees who used cell phones, iPads, etc., while on duty, while on time, they're, you know, being paid for it or expecting to be paid for it, how many of us have been in a store trying to talk to a cashier um, and... <clears throat> The uh, person behind us or the person across from the cashier who's doing the talking is on a cell phone attempting to carry on two conversations at once. Um, you know, the kids, uh, when I go to work, I have to put my full force into whoever I'm working for. That's why I'm there. The kids aren't in jobs yet, but they're certainly going to be down the road. So maybe we should be teaching them to focus on the job at hand, which is being a student. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks for the call. We also received several emails, including this one from Royzen Karu Arithi. I support Candace in what she said about having the personal devices in class. I'd like to add the fact that kids are also using the devices as recording devices. They're recording kids in the hallway and kids and teachers in class. My daughter's in grade 7. They're not allowed to be on their personal devices during class, which I completely support. I'd also question how they're teaching responsible use of the devices. My daughters have never had a course in it, nor have they ever had a speaker on the topic. What she knows has come from myself and my husband. And that comes from Royson Karu Arithi. Karen Smith, or Smythe possibly, writes, As a parent, I have no problem with Five Bridges Junior High's cell phone policy. I have one child in grade 9 at FBJH and another in grade 12 who was at the school when the current policy came into effect. Technology is a ubiquitous part of modern life. For children to be successful, they need to learn to balance their use of technology with their learning. If they're not allowed to develop this skill in junior you're high, then we're just delaying their learning of the skill to a later stage of their schooling or life. And that was from Karen Smith in Hubley. Michael Barber is the Director of Doctoral Studies at Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut. His research includes the use of mobile devices in classrooms. Good morning, Mr. Barber. Good morning. A contentious debate here in this one classroom, which probably reverberates in many, many communities. What do you make of the use of mobile devices in classrooms? Well, I think a lot of it depends upon how they're being used. I mean, like any other tool, I think, if we just, you know, sort of allow students to bring these things in and, and use them of their own accord, uh, I don't think they're going to have any real, you know, impact upon student learning or on student engagement. In fact, I think they probably would have a, a negative impact because, um, what you find is that most students today aren't as technically savvy as, as what we believe them to be. Um, now, if the whole point of introducing them at this uh, school and at this particular level is so that we can teach them how to use these tools in productive and meaningful ways, then, you know, it makes a, a, a big difference in, in how useful the tool can be, both as a learning tool and for the individual children going forward. Does that mean that there has to be some kind of protocol that the teacher's in charge of, that the, it really can't be a free-for-all, that it, there have to be reasonably well-defined rules about usage? Um, not necessarily rules, but, I mean, you can't just say, okay, students, you can all bring your devices to school and leave it at that. Um, you know, as one of your uh, listeners mentioned in the, I think it was one of the emails that you read out, students need to be taught how to do these things. And, you know, unfortunately, that means that in many instances, teachers need to be taught 
how to do these things as well. Because for many uh, folks that are you know, in front of our, our students these days, they didn't grow up in a society that was ubiquitous with these devices. So in many instances, you know, they have to learn a lot of the skills of using them productively and then be able to teach the students how to do that. And once we get to that stage, it's not a matter of, of rules and regulations and guidelines then, because once the students have those tools, it's up to them to be able to put them in place. And like any good teacher, it's just a matter of classroom management to keep the students on task. Uh, one of the questions I asked the principal the other day was whether or not there had been any assessment of outcomes in classes where over a period of a couple of years maybe there had been fairly liberal uh, allowance for the use of mobile devices. I I know it's early days, but is there any research in that area? Um, there isn't a lot in that area. Plus, uh, the thing you have to remember with technology is that technology is just a tool. And... Uh, the introduction or the absence of a tool in and of itself isn't going to impact learning. What impacts learning is how the teacher's practice changes or how the student's actions change using that tool. You know, if I have a traditional chalkboard in front of my classroom and I go up and do, you know, the traditional kinds of lectures, and then if I were to bring in a fancy whiteboard and now I can use PowerPoint and all those other things for my lectures, if all I'm doing is lecturing and if my instructional style hasn't changed, even though there's a new tool in play, learning is not going to change because my instructional practices haven't changed. So the introduction or the absence of these devices isn't in and of itself going to impact upon student learning. It's making sure that students are using them in ways that allow them to do things that they can't currently do now, that teachers are changing the way in which they design and deliver their instruction to leverage these devices so that students can get the most out of them. Michael, thank you very much. Not a problem. It was good to speak with you this morning. Likewise. Michael Barber is an assistant professor of education at Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut.